Ptolemy, regarding Taprobana, stated that his name had been changed to Salike. While Pliny gave several place names in Taprobana, Ptolemy, on the other hand, provided much more information about the island, which is surprising because there is so much, not only a complete list of beach and port names, but also the names of headlands, rivers and port cities, as well as the names of the many cities and tribes in the interior. Peri plus Maris Erythrae, or backquote backquote Voyages Around the Red Sea, an anonymous work from around the middle of the 1st century AD written by an Egyptian merchant who spoke Greek, shows that towards the east, stretching out across the sea facing west is the island of Polysimondu, formerly called People with Taprobana. Its northern part requires a day's journey, the southern part gradually tends to the west, and almost touches the estuary of Azania. The island produces pearls, transparent stones, gauze and turtle shells. Cosmos Indicopleists, backquote backquote Indian sailor Cosmos, who wrote the Christian topography in the early 6th century, stressed several times to impress his readers that the island that India called Serendib was the one previously called Taprobana by the Greeks. By the time of Cosmos the name Taprobana had disappeared. Kalimantan is Taprobana. From Sebum AD to the Middle Ages followed by the New World, various world maps have been created and can be observed, which show the development of Western knowledge about the entire Earth, from the simple to the almost current. This development was driven by the need for more accurate maps of trade routes to the world in the east, known as the Silk Road, namely from the Mediterranean Sea, followed by the Red Sea, the Erythraean Sea, the Indian Ocean, and ending in China. At the beginning of the century, this was the only trade route that was most widely known, while outside of these areas little information was obtained from the seafarers who had visited it. The island of Kalimantan is outside this route so that location is not known. This development was driven by the need for more accurate maps of trade routes to the world in the east, known as the Silk Road, namely from the Mediterranean Sea, followed by the Red Sea, the Erythraean Sea, the Indian Ocean, and ending in China. At the beginning of the century, this was the only trade route that was most widely known, while outside of these areas little information was obtained from the seafarers who had visited it. The island of Kalimantan is off this route so that the location is not known, or perhaps it was kept secret because the island has lucrative resources of superior quality which are very attractive for trading commodities. It is the author's subject to hypothesize that Taprobana is actually Kalimantan. The island of Taprobana is shown on maps of Decaerchus, 300 BC, Eratothenes, 220 BC, Strabo, 18 AD, Pomponius Mela, 43 AD, Ptolemy, 150 AD, Aladrisi, 1154 AD, Martellus, 1490 AD, Cantino, 1502 AD, Caverio, 1505 AD, Waldseemuller, 1507 AD, Lorenz Fries, Peter Alpian, 1520 AD, and Ptolemy edited by Lorenz Fries, 1522 AD, while medieval maps by Abraham Ortelius, 1570 AD, and after that it doesn't display. The maps made before Ptolemy were without more advanced geography and cartographic knowledge, so the information presented on the maps was rather sparse, general in nature and inaccurate. Geographical features are described by what they see, here are based on information from tourists and explorers. Beginning by Decaerchus in the 3rd or 4th century BC, Taprobana has been shown on world maps, based on what they heard, seen or information from other explorers, in the Indian Ocean without knowing its exact position, south, west or far to the west of the Indian Peninsula. Ptolemy map shows the entire world from Fortunati Insuli eastward to China, stretching about 180 degrees longitude and 80 degrees latitude. In his book, Geographia, there is a list of the names of approximately 8,000 places along with their approximate latitude and longitude. Most of these places were determined on the basis of ancient maps, Strabo, Eratosthenes, Herodotus, Hesiod and Hecateus, with approximate distances and directions obtained from other explorers and more accurate mappings by Philo and Josephus 100 years earlier, except for a few made through direct observation. Ptolemy was well aware that he knew only a quarter of the world and could not do more because the data available was of very poor quality especially outside the Roman Empire. This caused the maps and data compiled by Ptolemy to be inaccurate in many places. If we look at a map of the world and compare it to a modern map, we can clearly see the enormous irregularities, mostly in parts of Asia. His error in estimating the size of the earth also made another contribution to this inaccuracy. Ptolemy also provides 26 maps of the region and 67 maps of smaller areas. 
These maps are mostly in and around the Roman Empire, and only a few are in Greater India and China, of which is Taprobana. Maps of these areas and smaller areas have better accuracy, whether they are obtained from observations or data from tourists or other explorers. Placing these maps of regions and regions on a completely inaccurate world map derived from ancient maps caused confusion as to their exact position. Allegedly, he placed Taprobana based on an older map either from Eratosthenes or Strabo, which didn't actually have an island in that position, or he purposely placed it in the wrong place or obscured its location so that not everyone could get there. However, so far, the map exists. So far, however, the map worked well in the Renaissance until 13 centuries later Christopher Columbus misjudged the distance to China and India. With the fall of Constantinople to Ottoman Turkey in 1453, the road to Asia became much more difficult and dangerous. This resulted in a lack of information in areas covering the Indian Ocean, until Portuguese explorers made their way to Asia by sailing around Africa and with the conquest of the Malacca Sultanate in 1511. Thus, the Asian portion of the world map after Ptolemy continued to rely on information obtained from Geographia, and combines knowledge gleaned from Arab explorers and unknown sources, as shown on the maps of Al Adrisi, Martellus, Cantino, Caverio, Waldseemuller, Fries, and Alpian. Al Adrisi incorporated knowledge about Africa, the Indian Ocean, and the Far East gathered by Arab traders and explorers. Martella's map shows Ptolemy's strong influence, but Africa has been included. The Cantino map depicts the coast of Brazil and the African coast of the Atlantic and Indian Ocean with incredible accuracy and detail. Caverio's map shows the east coast of North America in surprising detail, the source of which is still a mystery. The Waldseemuller map is a new series of editions of Ptolemy Geographia by integrating new geographic information obtained from previous voyages. The Fries and Alpian maps are a rework of the Waldseemuller map. Most of these maps put Taprobana in more or less the same position as Ptolemy map, except for Cantino and Caverio's maps which depict it as Sumatra. By observing and comparing Ptolemy and Martella's maps, we can clearly see that there is confusion in mapping the Indian peninsula. Ptolemy described two main regions, India intra Gangam in the west where the peninsula does not protrude, where there is Larake Aryasa and Limurka, and India extra Gangam in the east where the peninsula protrudes, where there is Arya Chersoninus. He mapped Indus and Ganga in the western and eastern parts of India intra Gangam, and Sinus Magnus in the east of India extra Gangam, respectively. Martellus added another peninsula to the east, where there is Katagara, based on Ptolemy data, while other areas still resemble Ptolemy. This peninsula is supposed to be the Malacca Peninsula so the Indian Peninsula should be Ptolemy India extra Gangam. Subsequent maps by Cantino, Caverio, Waldseemuller, Fries and Alpian have confirmed this. On the Cantino and Caverio maps there are two islands depicting Selam, Sri Lanka, and Taprobana, Sumatra respectively. Waldseemuller, Fries and Alpian maps contain Sailor Salem, Sri Lanka, and Iava Minor, Sumatra, along with Taprobana but much further west. This is an indication that Taprobrana is not Sri Lanka or Sumatra, and it is suspected that the island was intentionally placed in the wrong place or had its location obscured to keep it a secret. It is estimated that the sailors tried to get to the island of Taprobana using Ptolemy map but could not find it at that location but then sailed further and finally found Sumatra which he considered Taprobana. Abraham Ordelius map was the first modern atlas to cover almost all of the major islands and major sites of Greater India. Apart from showing Zeeland, Sri Lanka, and Sumatra, Taprobana disappeared and Borneo, Kalimantan, and other islands in the archipelago were added. In doing so, it indicated the cartographer's knowledge had greatly increased at that time. Geographical conditions of Taprobana. Eratosthenes mentions that Taprobana is located in the East Sea, far across from Greater India. He gave details of the dimensions of the island namely 7,000 stadia, approximately equals 1,300 kilometers, in length, and 5,000 stadia, approximately equals 925 kilometers, in width. If we measure the island of Borneo, we can find that this dimension is very accurate. The envoys sent to Rome, as written by Pliny and Strabo, made a statement that the region experienced two summers and two winters, which clearly indicated that it straddled both sides of the equator. This is proof that Eratosthenes, Pliny and Strabo are right that they refer to Borneo as Taprobana. Pliny and Strabo state that the closest point to the coast of Great India is a peninsula known as the Caliacum, sailed for four days, and in the center is the backquote backquote island of the sun. 
The sea is greenish in color. There are lots of corals at the bottom, which the rudder of the ships can get caught if they hit it while sailing on it. The Kaliakam Peninsula in question is probably the Malacca Peninsula, they gave this name a reference to the name Kalantan or the older Kalantan which is located on the east coast of the peninsula. Kalantan has the earliest history of traces of human settlement dating back to prehistoric times, and became a major trading center in the late 15th century. Between Kalimantan and the Malacca Peninsula there is the Karamata Strait, the water is shallow and in the form of land during the Ice Age. Nearly a hundred islands and coral reefs exist in this strait, administratively under the Riau Islands and Bangka Belitung Islands, Indonesia, with the main islands being Natuna, Anambas, Bintan, Linga, Bangka and Belitung. The people of these islands are known for their sun-worshipping beliefs. The shallow sea and the corals at the bottom make it greenish in color. There are several islands around the island of Borneo. They are found in the Java Sea and Karamata Strait, which have a shallow depth of only 20 to 50 meters, in the form of a mixture of real islands and coral reefs. Between islands are coral reefs, the depths are even shallower so boats must be careful and prepared for these conditions. This also confirms Pliny's and Strabo's statements. The Dayak people who inhabit the island of Borneo are mostly hunters and farmers. Their leader wore clothes and accessories like Father Liber, just like what Pliny and Strabo said. They also have the most ancient tattoo traditions. The animals are abundant and the land is fertile. The island is also rich in metallic minerals such as gold, silver and copper, as well as all kinds of precious stones. The island is also rich in metallic minerals such as gold, silver and copper, as well as all kinds of precious stones. Pearl-producing oysters are cultivated in the seas around the island, now making up 40% of the world's pearl suppliers. Elephants Tigers and turtles were once abundant on the island as is illustrated in the traditions, language and legends of the Dayak tribes of how they became aware of the habitats and habits of these animals, but because of their tradition of hunting animals, the population is currently shrinking or becoming extinct. Dot. Indonesia is the place for ancient Stagadon, an animal like an elephant with a large size. DNA analysis shows that Asian elephants are native to Borneo, Fernando et al., 2003. The Borneo pygmy elephant, Elephus maximus borneensis, which is now threatened with extinction is the only one left in Borneo today, the same species in Java that became extinct about 200 years ago. Kalimantan, as well as Sumatra, is home to the giant turtle, Orlidia borneensis, and leopard, Neophelis nebulosa. These facts confirm the claims of Pliny, Strabo and Ptolemy. In everyday life, the hornbill, Rhinoplax vigil, is adored by the Dayak people in Kalimantan as a lesson for the community to learn from the behavior of this species. There are many different names for calling this bird, the Dayak people have many myths and legends that hornbills are messengers of the gods with the task of conveying holy messages. In their belief, the birds provide an example of life in terms of the loyalty of a married couple and their responsibilities in the family. The Dayak people teach their children not to hurt or kill the sacred bird. The act was considered taboo. Pliny and Strabo said that when it comes to going to sea, the people of Taprobana do not observe the stars, but they bring birds to the sea, which are allowed to fly from time to time, and just follow them because they must return to their original land. These birds were apparently the hornbills adored by the Dayak people. Pliny and Strabo state that the island has a port on the south coast, bordering the city of Polysimondus. There is a large lake called Megasba where the Polysimondus River originates from three channels each with a width of between 5 and 15 stadia, about 925 and 2775 meters, and the Sidera River is to the north of the lake. The three rivers are thought to be the Burrito, Kapis Murang and Kahayan rivers. The Burrito River is almost 3 kilometers wide, the Kapis Murang River is about 1 kilometer wide and the Kahayan River is about 1.5 kilometers wide in parts near the sea as mentioned by Pliny and Strabo. A large lake may form in a plain area due to a large flood from the mountains with a higher flow rate that can erode the upper part of the plain, but the bottom is flat and flat so that the velocity is much reduced and the eroded material settles there forming a dike, and the lake. A shallow lake on flat land can disappear in just a few hundred years. The current condition of the area is a large swamp. According to ancient maps, the town of Tanjungkura which is located on the south coast of Kalimantan is a prominent city. Some ancient manuscripts also mention this name. The literal meaning is backquote backquote city, Pura, Tanjung tree. 
The Cape Tree Mimusops alengi, is a medium-sized tree found in tropical forests in South Asia, Southeast Asia and Northern Australia. The Sanskrit name is, Bakula, so an ancient manuscript from the Singhasari Kingdom in Java refers to the city as Bakulapura. Backquote backquote Cape, can also mean land jutting out into the sea as is used in some place names, but this is not the case. In historical records, there is a community near the present city of Tanjung which is called Tanjungkiri. One of its legacies is the Aging Temple, which is located in Sungamalong Village, a Muntai Tenga district, Hulu Sungai Utara Regency, South Kalimantan Province. Carbon testing of one of the artifacts indicates it was around 200 BC. Tanjungpuri is probably the origin of Tanjungpura. The port of Hippuri mentioned by Pliny was probably Tanjungpuri. Initially, the indigenous people of Kalimantan did not apply the royal system. Their social life is based on customs and beliefs which are developed and passed down from generation to generation. These communities were originally formed from a small number of people and the amount of land needed to live and farm. Over time, they developed into larger communities which made their customs more complex, and required more land as well. Opening new land will create a new community so that over time several communities have formed but follow the same habits and inhabit the same area. They call all societies that have the same socio-cultural habits and inhabit an area as Banua, which means world, similar to Mundus, in Latin. People in Kalimantan still adhere to the concept of Banua, strongly until today. The word Banua, is something that symbolizes, worldwide, this is illustrated in the magnificent and large monument at the center of civilization called, Wana Saka Pala, which is now published as Borobudur. On the relief depicted on the wall, the history of the development of advanced civilization in the archipelago was recorded as the center of world civilization in the past. The mention by the public is recorded by naming, Lemuria, Atlantis, Ramayana and Bharata which are recorded in the Mahabharata book. Their social leaders are called backquote backquote kings, or backquote backquote raja. The name of the leader of the envoys to Rome is stated by Pliny as Rakia, perhaps this is a backquote backquote raja. James Brooke was also appointed as the backquote backquote Raja, who ruled all of Western Sarawak in the 19th century. The kingdom was introduced into their customs by Malay immigrants from Sumatra around the 4th or 5th century. Tanjungpura was possibly a backquote backquote Banua, in the early centuries in BC, so its full name became backquote backquote Banua Tanjungpura. Some ancient maps mention it as backquote backquote Tayopiro which the Europeans probably later referred to by the full name backquote backquote Tayopiro Banua. To make four consonants in a name, then shortened to, tap. Regarding the name, Salike, given by Ptolemy, there is an Austronesian word, Salaka, which means, white metal. This metal was probably a mixture of gold and silver, or backquote backquote electrum, in Greek. This metal can be found naturally in the southern part of Kalimantan as a byproduct of gold mining. This word is now used for the name of a cape, namely Tanjung Salaka, which is located on the southern coast of Kalimantan which is located almost around the location of Tanjungpura on ancient maps. The free slave Aeneas Plocamus was likely stranded in the vicinity of present-day Banjarmasan, according to what he mentioned, namely on the south coast of Taprobana. It was also stated that the territory was divided into two parts separated by a river. One part was filled with wild beasts and elephants, and the other was inhabited by the Prachi colonists, producing gold and gems. This river is possibly the present Burrito River and the Prachi colonists were the Banjar people who were indeed colonists on several islands in Indonesia. On ancient maps, the Banjar tribe is mentioned as Pako, Bansi, Biaho, Bandar and Banjar, and by Ptolemy as Baki. Banjarmasan by Odoric from Perdinone, an Italian Franciscan missionary, is mentioned as Thalamasan. Banjarmasan by the Roman tongue changed to Polysimondus.